Good afternoon from my kitchen and welcome to today's video in which I'll be turning this one butternut squash, homegrown butternut squash, into three meals and a dessert. If you have watched any of my squash review videos about the winter squash varieties that we have grown in the past years then you have probably heard me saying that I what I prefer is what I call one meal squashes which are butternut or other kinds of winter squash around one kilo uh, of weight which means that we can easily use them up in one meal. The reason for that is we don't have a freezer. If you have a freezer you can easily use up larger squashes by just uh, cutting up uh, the pieces that you don't use and save them for another meal. We don't have a freezer so when we cut into a squash we have to use it up within a couple of days. Our most productive variety in the past year was this butternut squash, Barbara, and the uh, fruits of this one are quite large. The taste is excellent but when I want to use one it um, requires a bit of planning and that's why I keep leaving them, not reaching for them when I go uh, to grab a squash from our uh, stash. <laughs> so I still have four out of the eight fruits left. This one is the largest. It's uh, 2.7 kilos or how many pounds is it? Let's have a look. That is five pounds and 15 ounces. That means that we'll be using, uh, we'll be eating this squash in the coming three to four days. And because I don't want mutiny on my hands. A very real risk. <laughs> I uh, try to think of meals that are quite um, different from each other. So today I want to make two of the meals completely. One of them will be the soup, which I can easily store for a couple of days and it actually becomes tastes even better. And I want to make the cake and I want to sort of prep the third meal as well. So let's get to it. Well, actually, let's back up first uh, to the day before, eh? before when we went to our allotment and I harvested some mixed mustard greens from the greenhouse, a nice mix of varieties. And I also picked some lettuce, which I harvest uh, leaf by leaf, and Belgian andive. And then outside in the garden, I harvested a few leeks. As you can see, the tops are somewhat damaged by frost, but it's no problem. We can still use uh, what's left. Now let's head back to the kitchen. I first peeled the whole butternut squash and then I used a large knife to cut it in half lengthwise. Please be careful when doing this because uh, using a large uh, knife on a hard squash can get quite dangerous. And when that, once that was done, I used a spoon to remove the seeds. After that, I cut off a bottom part of both of the halves about 800 grams in total which I would be using for my soup and I reserved I set that aside for later. I also cut off a piece that I would be needing for the cake which is uh, about one cup in total. The rest of the squash which was about 1500 grams I cut into cubes um, about half an inch or a little over a centimeter maybe one and a half centimeters large there's no need to get out your ruler uh, out for this. And I added the cubes to a large baking sheet. Then I drizzled the pieces with a bit of olive oil, seasoned them with salt and freshly ground pepper, and I tossed everything together using my hands so that all the cubes would be coated. And then I added a little bit of olive oil to a small baking sheet and I put in the piece of the butternut squash that I would be using for my cake later. I put everything in a preheated oven, uh, preheated to 200 degrees Celsius or about 400 Fahrenheit. And it took about 30 minutes for my pieces of butternut squash to get done and slightly caramelized. Uh, and then I set about half of them aside for the dish that I would be making the next day, the galette. And then I got on with making my first dish, which was a salad of mustard greens, roasted butternut squash and roasted chickpeas. I drained a jar of chickpeas and put them on a 
baking sheet. Drizzled a bit of olive oil on top. And then I seasoned them with one teaspoon of ground cumin. One teaspoon of ground allspice. And one teaspoon of ground coriander. And of course, I also added a little bit of salt. And then I tossed everything together so that all the chickpeas would be well coated with the spices and I put them in a preheated oven for about 10 minutes. Then I got on with making my dressing, three tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of uh, red wine vinegar, salt and pepper and I uh, whisked everything together. Then for serving I put my mustard greens in a large bowl and I drizzled the dressing on top and I used uh, two spoons to uh, toss the greens uh, with the dressing, then I put the roasted butternut squash on top and of course also my roasted chickpeas once they will cool down a bit and lastly I squeezed a bit of lemon juice on top and that was my first dish done. Then I got on with making my soup which is our favorite squash winter squash soup weighed with butternut apples, potatoes and warming spices like curry, cinnamon and turmeric and there's also a secret ingredient. I started by roughly chopping my reserved butternut squash. No need to be precise about this because the soup will be pureed later. I just want everything to be roughly the same uh, size. And then I peeled four apples and also about half a kilo or uh, uh, one pound of potatoes. I quartered and cored all the apples and I chopped them into roughly the same size as the butternut squash and I also chopped all my potatoes. Then I took a um, thumb-sized piece of fresh ginger and I peeled it and then chopped it finely. I find that this works better than grating it, so I uh, prefer to chop everything by hand in this case. And I added it to uh, the squash and potatoes. Then I uh, chopped two onions, not too finely because again the soup will be uh, pureed later. I added four tablespoons of olive oil into a large pan and then I added, when it, once it was heated, I added my onions and I sauteed them until they were uh, becoming translucent. At that point I added my butternut squash, apples, potatoes and ginger and then I started adding my spices. One tablespoon of curry powder, one teaspoon of cinnamon and one teaspoon of turmeric and of course also salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And then I let everything saute for about five minutes so that the spices would and mingle with the vegetables. Uh, after five minutes I added enough boiling water to cover everything and I also added two bay leaves. I stirred everything a bit and then covered the pot with a lid and let the soup simmer for about 30 minutes. Once the soup cooled down a bit I took out the bay leaves and pureed it in a blender after which I returned the pureed soup into the pan and I added about three quarter cup of whipping cream and my secret ingredient, one third cup of whiskey. Uh, then I seasoned the soup with some freshly ground black pepper and salt and then it was ready for serving. To serve I poured, I ladled some soup into a bowl and I added a little bit of creme fraiche, which is totally optional but delicious, some freshly ground blank pepper and some finely chopped Chinese chives, which are just beginning to sprout in the garden. And that's my soup done. And then it was time to make my marbled winter squash bundt cake with chocolate glaze and rum raisins, which is a totally decadent, over-the-top version of my everyday butternut squash cake which I made in the December video. So if you want something a little extra, this is the cake for you. First I prepared the raisins, about one third cup and a little bit less than that of rum and I brought it uh, to a boil in a small pan and then set aside to steep the raisins uh, in the rum. 
For the batter I needed one cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of rye flour, but you can use all-purpose as well, or a whole wheat, then one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a little bit of salt. And lastly, about one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and I whisked all the dried ingredients together and set them aside. I got on with my wet ingredients. Into a large measure measuring jar I poured half a cup of olive oil, half a cup of kefir. Normally I use buttermilk but I didn't have any. Then I cracked in two eggs and I also should have added sugar at this point, half a cup of sugar, but I forgot about that so I had to add that later and I don't have that on camera. Meanwhile my last piece of butternut that was destined for the cake was fully baked, which I checked by piercing it with a knife. And I put that in a small bowl and mashed it with a fork and I removed the skin because I didn't want that in my batter. And once it was uh, cooled down, once it cooled down a bit, I added it to the, wet, the rest of the wet ingredients and I whisked everything together with a fork. Then I poured my wet ingredients into the flour mixture and stirred everything together until it was fully incorporated, but also being careful not to overmix. And once that was done, I poured about half of the batter into a greased bund form. And then I added my ram raisins on top, trying to spread them out evenly. And then I added two tablespoons of cocoa powder, which I first mixed with two tablespoons of boiling water. I added that to the rest of the batter to make the chocolatey portion of the cake. And once that was fully incorporated, I poured that uh, the second half of the batter into the bund form as well. And once the cake was ready for the oven, I put it in. Um, it was The oven was preheated to 180 degrees, about 360 Fahrenheit, and I baked the cake for about 50 minutes, 40-50 minutes, um, and then I checked with a skewer whether it was done. It has to come out clean. While the cake was uh, cooling, I got on with making my glaze. I needed a quarter cup of cream, four tablespoons of butter, and about three and a half ounces or 100 grams of chocolate, and I melted that au bain marie and then I let it cool, uh, cool the glaze a bit. Once it was spreadable, pourable, I uh, poured it or spread it all over uh, the bundt cake. And then finally it was time to taste our delicious, decadent, over-the-top, marbled winter squash cake with chocolate glaze and rum raisins. And this cake actually tastes uh, good for a couple of days, but it never lasts that long. The next day I made the last dish with the reserved roasted butternut squash. This beautiful golden galette with uh, squash, leeks, thyme, garlic, some goat cheese and some pecans. I started by making the dough for my galette. I needed two third cups or 80 grams of all-purpose flour and two third cup or about 90 grams of rye flour, but you could also use more all-purpose or whole wheat flour. I just like the taste of rye flour. To that I added half a teaspoon of salt and I whisked all the dry ingredients together. Then I cut about half a cup or 120 grams of cold butter into smallish cubes and I added those cubes to my flour mixture and used the tops of my fingers to bring it together, to crush the butter into smaller pieces. You want the mixture to resemble breadcrumbs, but you want some bigger pieces of butter in there uh, to remain, because that's what will make for the laminated dough. Then I crushed one egg into a half a cup measuring cup, whisked it and then added enough milk to make up the half a cup. I whisked the mixture together well and I added about half of it to the butter and flour. I brought everything together using my hands and once the dough was cohesive I got on with rolling it out on a floured countertop. And this particular technique that I use is what will make a laminated 
DAO. It's a quite an easy way to uh, have the beautiful butter layers in your dough. I uh, roll it out the dough out into an elongated shape and then fold it as a business letter in thirds. And then I repeat this process once more. Uh, again, rolling it out a bit and then folding it uh, on itself into thirds. You can repeat it three times, but I find that twice is enough. And then I put the uh, dough uh, in, on, in a disc on a plate, covered with another plate and put it in a fridge for about half an hour. Meanwhile, I cleaned my leeks. This is how I like to do it. I cut the top uh, in half lengthwise and then wash out all the dirt. Then I slice the leeks, uh, not too finely, but also not, not, very, <laughs> not into very large pieces. I added the sliced leeks into a preheated pan with a bit of olive oil. I added some freshly ground pepper and a bit of salt. And I stirred everything, uh, sautéed the leeks until they became soft. And then I added some uh, uh, finely chopped garlic and finely chopped thyme and sauteed everything for about a minute more. Then I turned off the heat and I added the reserved butternut squash, the pieces that I had uh, left, and I stirred everything together. I rolled out my chilled dough into a large circle and then transferred the dough onto a baking sheet lined with parchment paper before adding my filling made out of leeks, sautéed leeks and roasted butternut squash and while doing that I left an edge of about five centimeters or two inches. I crumbled some soft goat cheese on top and then I folded the edge of the dough inwards, pleating it while going around so that everything would stay put. And then I used the remaining egg and milk mixture to brush uh, on the edges of the dough. And because there was a little bit of it left, um, I didn't want to waste anything. I just poured that into the middle of the galette. And then lastly, I added some pecans before putting the galette into the oven that was preheated to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit for about 35 to 40 minutes or until it's... Uh, beautifully golden and I leave it for about 20 minutes before cutting into pieces and this time I served the galette with some mixed garden greens the uh, mustard greens and some uh, lettuce and endive so that was my last meal made with the one butternut squash so that was how I turned one butternut squash into three meals and a dessert. We still have a couple of those large ones left as well as some uh, smaller butternuts. So if you have any other uh, suggestions on how to use them, if you have any favorite recipes, please share them below. And if you would like to see more recipes that I make with butternuts, check out my December week of eating from the garden video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you again soon. Happy gardening and bon appétit!